Woo doggy! It is a red letter day in the crashing land, let me tell you that. Go ahead. Go ahead, ask me. Ask me, see the crashing. Why are you in such a good mood? I'll tell you why. Glorious, glorious condition there. Just a beautiful thing. Now, I feel as cool as I always thought I was. But it doesn't come without a side effect. You see, even though this was really expensive, there is a hidden side effect to having a new AC unit put in. You see, I play Skyrim with mouse and keyboard. And that's going to be a little difficult now because this new AC unit cost me an arm and a leg. Oh, come on. That, 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 was, that was good. Okay, okay. That joke sucked. All right, enough joking aside. Uh, welcome back to the channel. This is episode four, the saga of Snake. I am Necrasin, of course, as always. Last episode, I talked about us uh, maybe during the break off camera. I would go around to some of the ore veins that are laying around uh, this area and uh, mine some iron ore. But then I got to thinking about it. Why should I go wandering all around the countryside when I know a location close by that has a whole bunch of iron? It's one-stop shopping, and of course I'm talking about Ember Shard Mine. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to go clear out Ember Shard Mine. Because I'm pretty sure the current residents, I think we're going to have to evict them. I don't think they're going to like us, you know, just showing up. But, before we do that, I, I, I do this a lot, don't I? I know. I know, I know, sorry. Uh, we're going to head back to Riften. I got some junk to sell, courtesy of those banditos down by the river. And I brewed up a couple more potions. So we're going to go and sell that stuff and get a little more, uh, a little more light armor training. And then we come back, we're going to hit Ember Shard Mine, and we're going to try and do it stealthy Necrosassin style. Which reminds me, let's take a look at something here. We need to uh, favorite some items here. Let's favorite Oak Flesh. We may or may not use that. Fury. That's too much fun not to use. Uh, I don't think we need anything there. Conjure Familiar. Ray Zombie. Oh, yeah. We definitely want those. All right. Let's get some of this stuff hotkey. Let's see. Iron Dagger is on one. I think... Do I want do I want that? Do I want iron dagger on one? No, I think I'm going to put the mace on one. And I think I'm going to sell the iron daggers. I have a steel dagger, so we'll stick with that. Uh what do we want in slot number 2? I've got healing in 3. Let's put flames on 2. Healing is still 3. Fury is going in 4. That's easy to remember. Fury 4. And let's put our, let's see, five, I think we'll make five oak flesh. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Ray zombie. Ray zombie's on five. We'll put oak flesh in six and we'll put our conjure familiar in seven. I often put my conjurable character in slot seven so that one's easy for me to remember the rest of them i won't remember I, i've already forgotten as a matter of fact okay uh mace on one flames is on two healing is still three fury four re zombie five okay healing flames mace uh, Fury, Ray Zombie, what did I do with six? Oak Flesh, and seven is Conjure Familiar, perfect, that'll do it, all right, let's get our bones to Riften, we've got some shopping to do. Let's go visit our buddy Snelf. Divine's bless you. May the oh, thank you. Divine's bless your kind heart. 
You must have bought 20 pairs in the last two years. Looking to stay alive. All right, let's unload the weapons and armor with this guy. What brings you to Balaman today? Repair? Purchase? What do you have for sale? Take a look. So I hit the shrine of Zenithar, and we have the amulet of Zenithar on. So let's unload both of those. Two of those. I'll keep the steel sword for now. He still has uh, plenty of money. We are not putting a dent at all in his uh, cash supply. That is it. That's all we can sell him. So, you seem quite proud of your work. Smithing's been in my blood for generations. I owe my success to my forefathers and their recipe for flame. The secret is my forge. It consumes fire salts, a strange mineral that burns as hot as red mountain lava. Impressive. Well, it was. Sadly, this forge is dying, and I've used the last of my fire salts. If I can't feed it soon, it may grow cold. I hate a cold fire. But speaking as someone who's recently reacquainted themselves with cold, it's not so bad. Uh, I might be able to find some for you. You will? Thank you. Ten pinches of fire salt should give me all I need to bring this forge back to life. Ten? Man, I was thinking like one or two. Where can I find fire salts? Like I don't already know. A flame Atronach's body might provide fire salt. Haha. <laughs> dangerous creatures that can be summoned by wizards. Of course, it would be much easier to check with an alchemist. They occasionally have them for sale. Remember, nothing but genuine fire salts will do. The forge knows the difference. Yeah. It has a brain. Working at the Riften Fishery is tough. All right. I'll contact my man tonight. Let's get a quest from this guy. some fine goods from Morrowind. Can I interest you in some fine goods from Morrowind? Have anything you wish to sell? I pay fair prices for all sorts of goods. Uh, you have an odd name for a dark elf. I may be dark elf by birth, but I was raised Argonian. For reasons I'm still trying to discover. I ended up orphaned and taken in by a kindly Argonian family in Black Marsh. I hope one day to find out what happened to me. How I ended up like that. Uh, do you have any clues about your eyes to the road? What the hell? I didn't. Th if there's anything you wish to, just one. I know when I was found by my Argonian father, I was wrapped in a blanket bearing the symbol of House Telvani. It was one of the great houses in Morrowind long ago. That's true. Whether that means I was one of them or not, I'm uncertain. If you come across anything in your travels that might provide me with the answers I'm looking for, I'd be grateful. I'll keep my eye open. Thank you. Why were you searching in Skyrim? I learned that a matron who had served for House Telvani had escaped Morrowind during the Accession War. Records showed her barring passage aboard a sailing vessel named the Pride of Telvos. But that's where the trail ran cold. I spent years looking for what became of the ship, but I ended up empty-handed. Okay. Anything you can find would be of great help. Good luck. Training. Gems, potions. You gonna buy something, or just here for training? Training. Otherwise, move on. You gonna buy something? You otherwise, piss off. Quick on your feet. Uh, we're not getting a whole lot of training with only a thousand sixty-five gold, unfortunately. However, I got a few things I can sell her. See for yourself. I didn't sell everything I had because I have some potions here. Uh, no, you cannot have that, but you can have that one and that one. And I got some slow, so I can sell uh, a couple of those. Eighteen percent. Let's get rid of that one. Well, 
Boy, that's still not a lot. Uh, I'll sell one more slow. What about the brief invisibility? Ah, man, 20 seconds. I, I want to keep that one. Wait a minute. Oh, I might have to. All right. Damn it. Damn it. I didn't want to do all that. Okay. I'll teach you how to use it effectively and yeah, keep yeah, you quick on, on your it. feet. That only leaves us with 158 gold, but we got all five levels of training. And we're ready to level up again. And if I had money, I could get more training. All right, that's it. Come back when you're ready to spend more gold. Goodness knows I could use it. Haven't I spent enough for one day? In the highest quality in Skyrim. All right, we do have a level up, and we've had all our training, so there's nothing stopping us from leveling up. I'm going to grab some health this time. And we did not overlevel. That's good. So we have two perks. I think I'm going to hang on to one of them because I like having a spare. I like having a backup. So the question is, where is this one going to go? I know I was talking about putting something in light armor, and I still may. But I'm also considering conjuration. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm also thinking of illusion, so I may grab that one as well. I don't know, do I want to hang on to this perk or do I want to put it into illusion? We're going to be using a little bit of illusion magic. Let's check something here. What is the cast cost for? Let's see, Fury. It's 58. Yeah, we can handle that. I'm going to hang on to that one. All right. Quick save, just in case. Looking to stay alive? Well, take a chance. Man, you sneak up on me like that. There's gonna be some uh slapping going on. Alright, let's let's get ourselves back to uh Ember Emberwood bar. Alright, it is time. There are some spells in there that I wanna get my hands on. A couple of my mods. Now we could go in the back way. And grab them from there and just avoid everybody. But where would the fun be in that? Let's just go whoop some ass. Ah, the wolves are back. Just the one, huh? All right, where are you? All right, there you are. Come on. There's somebody down here you need to meet. Now, Oak Flesh, for you folks not that familiar with Skyrim, this spell I just cast, Oak Flesh, it increases your armor rating. See, right now our armor rating is 84. That spell gives us 40 points of armor. You can get perks that make it a lot more powerful. Hey, where's the dude that hangs out here? Well, I don't like this. Where's the guy that's supposed to be standing guard? You can take off, little buddy. I'll, I'll bring you back if I need you. Split, man. Alright, let's get sneaky here. Uh, let's get up, uh, not that one. Let's get up, uh, all right. Nothing like a little stealthy gameplay. I mean, after all, that's that that's our character. That's our, our play style. So we want to grab these torches, keep us in the dark. In the dark. You gotta say it right. And what we're gonna try and do, because there's two guys down below there. Again. I told you, we have 
We're gonna try and nail one of those guys. Got him. There you go. This is a this is a fury spell. For those that don't know, the fury it gets anybody in the area fighting with whoever got hit with the spell. This one doesn't last very long, but you can make this spell stronger. <laughs> See, I told you Fury was fun. Oh, he killed one of them. Well, you know what that means. Mike, go back to doing what you're doing. Okay, I can't see the body very well. I think the body is right. I missed. Shit. Now, way to go. Nice shooting, Ace. I swear that's the body. Right there. Oh, yeah. There we go. Ah, uh, he's going after him. Nice conjuration increase. <laughs> this is the Necro Assassin. You fury him, they get to fight, and one of them dies. You raise that one, and he gets to fight in the other one. And he took him out. Nice job, dumbass. And they make those weird noises. This guy's gonna come run across a bridge. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Nothing this time. Yeah, when a zombie dies, it turns into an ash pile. You can get a, a permanent zombie, I believe it's called. Uh. Uh. uh Dan. I don't know, I can't remember. But there is, uh. It's a master level spell, I think. Let's see, I don't care about your journal. There's nothing interesting in there, except he talks about the fact that the cave is unsafe. Go figure. I guess he was right, huh? That's probably enough torches. All right, where's the next victim? Love playing the Necro Assassin. It's just too much flipping fun. You were close to leveling up again. We bumped up Illusion, we bumped up Sneak, we bumped up Conjuration. Now, somebody's sitting right there. Now, I can't Fury him. I mean, I can, but it's not going to do any good because he's alone. So, we'll just let our boy take care of it. Or we can just go, you know what? Let's just go whoop his ass. Hey, dumbass. Stealthy? Not always. I want that. You keep your weapon because you may need it again. Yeah, if you raise a zombie and uh, if you if you take the weapon, then then you raise the zombie. They got nothing to fight with. They'll go looking for one. Now, there have been times when I had a really, really good weapon, and I, uh, I killed a bandit or something, and you can, their their body right now, as you can see, it's it's like a container. I can put stuff on him. So I could give this, uh, give the dead body, put in its inventory, a really, really good weapon, then reanimate it, and it'll use that weapon and just start whooping all kinds of ass with it. It's just too much fun. Clairvoyance. Salt pile, great. Fly Amanita, excellent. More salt pile. You keep the cabbage. Actually, uh, I think I'm going to take the... 
those are three of the four ingredients for making vegetable soup. Circlet, it's worth some money. Hide braces, oh boy. Steel gauntlets of archery. Bows do 20% more damage. It's too bad this is heavy armor, but we can disenchant that to learn the enchantment. All right, vegetable soup is good because it gives you one point of stamina every second for, uh, what is it, like 12 minutes. Uh, and one second, one point is, you only need one point of stamina to make a power attack. And uh, if you're getting one point a second, well, you can't make power attacks faster than once per second. So you see where that's going. It means perpetual power attacks. Right, let's grab this torch so we can keep us hidden. And we're going to need to grab that one. Alright, now there's going to be... There's a guy down below hitting, uh, banging on an anvil. There's one that walks this route here and onto the bridge. There he is now. We want to fury that one. Because... Oh, balls. Oh, jeez. There's another guy sitting over there. He would have run past him and they would have started whoa, fighting. Oh, I can't go back there. I'll be standing in the light. Oh, now I'm kind of wishing I kept that uh, invisibility potion. <laughs> I just needed the money. All right, so let's just give him a minute here to calm down. See, the, the idea is if we can hit that guy on the bridge, he's going to run over to this way. This is the only way he can get over here. Because if you hit somebody with a spell, any kind of hostile spell, if you hit him with an arrow, they're going to run to exactly where that spell, that arrow was launched from. So if we hit him with that, he's going to run across the bridge to this way. And there's another cat sitting over here. So if he's furied, that guy's gonna get up and engage him. They're gonna start fighting. That's what we're looking for. Oh, they're still... Oh, hell. I'm gonna back up a little bit more. Quickly, 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 quickly. Man, raid, it makes it so tough. I love it though. All right, when that sneak eye changes to hidden, then they're going to go back to their normal uh, routine. Okay. So now now we're good. Well, they, I mean, they might still be here, but they're going to walk back to where their normal positions are. There's one of them. And we got to wait for that cat to get back on the bridge. Well, let's see. We've got a an iron ore vein right there. And let's see. I'm going to need my light. Here's another one. This is a really nice mod. This is the refinery that retextures this stuff. The the ores, ingots, and the ore veins is what this mod retextures. I, I quite like it. It's nice looking stuff. Let's grab some of these. Fly them and eat is always good. There's another ore vein. And it does uh, all of them, not just iron. Okay, that guy's banging on the anvil again. Let's go see if our boy on the bridge is ready. I forgot we could have raised that one. No problem though. Let's let's uh, get the fury thing going. All right, where are you? Where is Bridge Boy? We gotta hit him when he comes, he walks up and down this route right here. So as soon as he stops on the bridge, that's when we need to nail him. Because he doesn't stand still for very long, obviously, because I missed him before. Oh, he's just standing right there, huh? You did not return to your normal routine. Huh? 
All right, now the guy that was sitting there should engage. Yeah. We got to worry about the one down below. I think that one got activated too. All right, he killed him. Wait, are they coming down here? Uh-oh. Run. doing our sneak skill some serious justice here time to end this little game you're as good as death all right time to poison <laughs> Punk. Alright, now we can take their kit. Oh, that one's got a gem on her. Uh I I love uh, I love the gems. That's the first one of the game. I actually have this room in Lakeshore Cabin. It's called a gem pit. It's a place you go in there and just drop them on the floor and they won't go anywhere. So you can get like this huge, huge pile. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I'm not even joking. Yeah, an actual gem pit. Here, let's uh, let's bust out a torch here. Since we have them. Bag of money. Mine. There's, uh, you know, the crapper. Shut up. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very not uh, nice to my zombies. Okay, I don't care, man. Stupid zombies. He served his purpose. Dagger. If we don't sell the daggers, we can always hang on to them to use for enchanting. Gold hide bracers, more lock picks. Nice. Oh man, look at this. A ruby. Excellent. Garnet amethyst. Money, money, money. Mine. Money. Salt pile. That's not what I meant to do. Don't need green apples. Well, we've got some tomatoes now. The only thing we need for the uh, vegetable soup is leeks. Good luck finding those. There's some salt pile. All right. Take all your kit check that empty sack because you know <laughs> well this was a little bit uh, a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be another bag of money oh come on mine I hate it when it disrupts my routine you know gold lock pick silver necklace steel arrows good now, speaking of steel arrows, I talked about torch arrows in the last mod. That one guy was shooting torch arrows at me. And how many did we get off of him, anyway? Thirteen. Torch arrows, as you can see, burns the target with ten fire damage for five seconds. Sets a small area ablaze upon impact, illuminating, illuminating the area and dealing additional fire damage to enemies for fifteen seconds. These are nasty. I love them. They're great. Uh, we can make these. 
and one of the ingredients to make these is steel arrows. We also need fire salts, sorry Balamond, and uh, we need dwarven oil, which you can find in a dwarven ruin or it's uh, an alchemical ingredient. So some, um, some alchemists will have them in stock and we can buy that. So dwarven oil, uh, you need 24 steel, steel arrows, you got dwarven oil, you got fire salts, and you can make 24 torch arrows. These things are really, really helpful. They're helpful against uh, really tough characters, and uh, especially with the undead. Let's go down below. There's a few things to gather down here, and then uh, we got some spells to pick up. I'm not going to grab all of them. I'm only going to grab like a, the novice and... I don't know, maybe apprentice level stuff for right now, which means we'll have to come back here multiple times. Light armor forging, that's another skill book. Oh, well now I'm over encumbered. Uh, hmm. What am I going to do about this? I, I, You know what? I was going to make some carry capacity items that probably should have. Let's see. Let's just drop the stupid Warhammer. Because I, I, we've got some iron to, to pick up. And this Fly Amanita. This is really good stuff. There's uh, some great potions and uh, maybe even some poisons. And I, I don't remember the exact alchemical formula, but it's a very useful item. So anyway, this was a, a very quick little insight into the Necro Assassin playstyle. So now you have a, a much better idea, uh, aside from my just my description of what the Necro Assassin does. Here, let's put on the put on the quick light. Let's see, I don't have uh, I don't have any novice level conjuration spells, but what I do have that I want in here is where is it? Curse of Red Mountain. Now, if you watch the video where I talked about this, I, I changed this a little bit. So, well, this uh, hmm, the text isn't completely right. I set it to where it does five points of fire damage for 30 seconds. It's showing 10 for zero, so I guess I still didn't get the text proper on this one. But um, it is a greater power. And I made this spell specifically because the Dark Elf's greater power is Ancestor's Wrath, which is a, a flame cloak. It's, it's kind of a crap spell because anybody can buy a flame cloak. Uh, Curse of Red Mountain, on the other hand, is uh, pretty potent. So, Curse of Red Mountain is, um, well, if you haven't seen it, I'll have to show that to you another time. Uh, let's see. Do we have, we don't have any novice level spells in here. Just some apprentice ones. We don't need the apprentice ones just yet, so we're going to leave these alone. These are all uh, apprentice and higher level spells. This is uh, Destruction Mage's Compendium. That's uh, another one of my quick little mods. And this is uh, the Conjuration mod. Alright, so. When we have that out of the way, I have a little bit of mining to do. And then we're going to go make that armor. So, where the hell is the ore vein? I know there's one around. There you are. Alright. I'm going to get this out of the way, I will edit this out, and I will see you again in just a few seconds. Alright, that is everything. I mean, mining wise. Uh, 26 iron ore. 22 ingots. So, we'll head back to Emberwood Bar, we'll convert the iron ore into ingots, grab our leather and our... Uh, leather stringies or whatever and make us some new armor. Strips, strips, leather strips. 
<laughs> leather stringies. Uh, there is the exit, so in the future, uh, we can always just hop in right there and get to those chests where the spell tombs are. I mean, we could have done that now, but I mean, like I said, where's the fun in that? If you got some bandits that you can beat up on, why wouldn't you want to? They are just too much fun. I call them names, idiot, dumbass. But the game just would not be the same without them. Alright, let me unload some unnecessary things first. Alright, first to the smelter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got 26 iron ore. We can convert this straight into ingots. Iron is different than other uh, ingots. Uh, most, I think every other type of ingot requires two ore. The iron only is one. So if you're ever wanting to buy iron ore or iron ingots, buy the ore because it costs like six gold, whereas the ingot costs 20. And you can just convert the ore to an ingot at any smelter. Save yourself a pile of money. All right. We are going to make, provided I'm not forgetting anything else. Let's see, is this what I'm calling it? The Blackguard stuff? I've got uh, the Guildmaster stuff and the Thieves Guild stuff. And there is also, I've got some other modded things in here. Some of them mine, some of them others. Judo Cutlass. Hmm. Berserk Judo. That, that's another... We'll, we'll make this one at some point. But right now, we are going to make this... Uh, I'm calling it, in this mod, this is uh, Necrassen's Thief Armor Pack, is what I'm calling it. There's more to it than just what's here. Uh, there's some... I think there's some robes you can craft as well. But I'm calling these a Black Guard Boots. But it's the same outfit that you see... Sapphire wearing, um, what's her name, Tanelia in the Thieves Guild. The gray one with, without the sleeves, it's the same one. The only copy like this that you can get in the game, there's only two. One of them is uh, Linway stuff. That's a quest and those, those items have an enchantment on them. And so if you don't like those enchantments, then, uh, you know, you're SOL. Uh, the other one is actually Black Guard's Armory that you can get from another quest on Solstheim. It has pretty much the same enchantments as Linway's, but they're way better. But there are some useful things in there. I think there's some pickpocket. There's uh, better prices. But the ones I'm going to make are unenchanted. So, let's make the boots. The Curious... Boy, am I going to have enough leather? Gauntlets. And the hood. So you can see dudes in the skivvies right now. I think our armor rating before was uh, 44. Let me check something here. Yeah, oh, let's just put, yeah, it was 44. So let's grab this gear. And you can see our arm rating is 107. This stuff is... It's a little better than the existing Thieves Guild armor. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, but it's a little bit better. And I can make the brown Thieves Guild armor. I can make the dark stuff that Brynjolf and Mercer wear. Let's see, uh, the Guildmaster stuff. And uh, I can make the Nightingale stuff too. That's what the mod does. Like I said, there's some robes I can make at the tanning rack. What I want to know is... If we try to improve this stuff here at the bench, how much of an improvement can we get? Boots will go from 18 to 19. Um, yeah, why not? <laughs> That's not much of an improvement, but I got plenty of iron now. Alright, now... We're at 113 armor rating. Okay, so. 
Do I want to level up right now? I was going to spend that. Yeah, okay. I was going to spend that perk. Uh, let's grab a little more Magicka. Now, grab that perk in light armor. Agile Defender, 20% better on the armor rating. We were 113 before. Now we're 135. Now we're working on some defense. The armor cap, though, the highest armor rating can get is 567. So we're a long way from the armor cap. But hey, it's episode 4. Give me a break. That's a pretty decent uh, armor rating at this point in the game. Although, in the big scheme of things, it's still kind of crap. But uh, this is what the armor looks like. Let's go up on a roof. we got a little better light, I think. We'll take the quick way. By the way, I did plant. Wow, that was quick. Man, I planted this stuff. We went into uh, Amber Shard and came out, and all my stuff is here. Great. All right, so let's get a look at this. Our guy's starting to look kind of uh, ominous there, isn't it? Boy, he's, what a scowl, man. The complete opposite of the way I felt when I started this episode, because I was in a really good mood. You know, air conditioning will do that to you in Florida in the summer when you haven't had it for two flipping weeks. Anyway. Yes, there is another mod that's active right here. It's a mod called Frankly HD Thieves Guild Armor. It's a texture replacer for all the Thieves Guild variants. So that's why this stuff looks uh, a little bit nicer than the vanilla armor. <laughs> and when I say a little bit, I mean a whole lot better. I think it's more noticeable with the brown version. But the brown version is what the Thieves Guild always, always gives you when you join them. This stuff is uh, its a little harder to get. So anyway, that is going to be it for this episode. We've got some harvesting to do. These mushrooms right here, this is one of uh, Rudy's. One of Rudy's mods that makes the uh, the mushrooms and uh, Nern Root glow. Well, it makes glowing mushrooms actually glow. And uh, the Death Bell is another one. You can see how this is kind of illuminated. If you want that mod, you will need to have an ENB to have this glowing effect because it uses the, the ENB to make that happen. So, just to let you know. Okay, well, that is going to do it for now. Hopefully this was uh, somewhat entertaining and not too boring. And uh, Ember Shard was kind of fun, though. You got to see a little bit of Necro Assassin in action. Uh, it actually worked out quite well in the beginning there because we did Fury those two. We got them fighting. One of them killed the other, which rarely happens. I, I've, I've done this before many times, using the Fury on them. And it's like they fight for five or ten seconds and then they both walk away like nothing ever happened. Um, so the fact that one killed the other and then we were able to reanimate, reanimate the dead one and we stayed undetected the whole time, that is the Necro Assassin in action. So anyway, that'll do it for now. Thanks for watching. Take it easy and I will see you in episode five.